What is up everybody? Welcome back to T Dog Customs and to another video. It is a rainy Saturday night. My wife is putting my daughter in bed, so I figured I'd come out here, uh, do a little bit of work um, on the Cummins YJ. So uh, I spent quite a few hours today cleaning, and uh, it still needs a lot done, but. <sighs> I finally put all my tools back and like cleaned up a lot of my uh, tools like hopefully you can see that but from years of uh, working they just get really dirty so why you clicked on this video most likely is because I'm going to show you how to install a governor springs on a P pump or you know, a P7100 uh, pump now these come on the 12 valve Cummins um, But uh, you can do a p-pump conversion on a 24 valve and that's what I have in my Jeep uh, Is the 24 valve with the p-pump conversion? So what the advantage of that is is that it turns everything all me uh, mechanical so I literally have like a fuel shut off right here and I don't have any computers or anything. So that works out really good. Now there's a thousand different kinds of companies you can go with for Governor Springs. Um, but this is all it is. So 4K Governor Springs, uh, I believe the stock governor on these p pumps is like either 25 or 3 i can't remember exactly but we want to get a little more rpm out of the p pump um, which will in turn you know let us have a little more a uh, little more fun you should say um, it does fine now but Literally for like 20 bucks or whatever it was, uh, you can grab yourself some uh, things. I'll put a link down in the description of the ones I bought off of Amazon. Um, I don't know, I haven't really done a ton of research on different companies and brands. I don't really anticipate that there's much difference, uh, but you know there may be so do your own research but I'll put the link down in the description for the ones I bought so uh, there is on this process here uh, there is a few pointers that you're really gonna want to pay attention to because you can ruin your P pump very 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 easily by forgetting uh, something or dropping a piece down inside the p-pump and you do not want to do that so don't rush this process take your time let's get right into it let's go the first step you're gonna have to do if this is uh, the p-pump is still in your vehicle whatever it's in I'll try to get as good up here as you can but you're gonna have to take this off right here. So that comes off by, uh, there's a, I believe it's a eight millimeter down here. And you will loosen that bracket up and pull that arm off. That is the shut off uh, solenoid now there's a key way in that and I'll show you guys that hopefully um, but I'm running into some lighting issues my flashlight I typically use or my light is not working let me see if this uh, piece of junk is working Oh, haha. -ha. All right. So I got this to work. Maybe this will 
help. This is what I was talking about. Uh, there's an eight millimeter here um, where my finger is. That has to come off. You loosen that up. Now on mine, I have this tension spring for the shut off uh, that I will need to take off. So I'm running the eight mil down in here. Uh, let's see if this will loosen up. The main thing here is to remember there is a keyway. So I just loosened up the eight millimeter bolt here. And you need to remember guys, so important, there's a keyway on this arm. And if you lose that keyway, it will not shut off properly and it will not uh, potentially get open up all the way to give you, you know, uh, your full fuel. So don't lose the keyway is what I'm trying to say. Down at the bottom, there's like the little split spot. So if you can stick your screwdriver in that and kind of pry it apart. Since this one's so crusty, I'm going to try to use a little WD-40 to... So I decided since I'm working over the fender, uh, it's time that I start using some of the tools and the stuff that I have. So I bought this a long time ago. Uh, it's a fender saver. That's what I call it. But uh, pretty much what you do is it saves your fender from scratches while you're leaning over it, working on it. Plus I like it because it's got like this little trough here. I can set tools and it's not going to roll away um, on me. I know this isn't like a gym or anything, but every little bit helps. So here we go. Um, I'm gonna pry this. Okay, okay, it's coming, it's coming. And I still have the spring connected. I probably should take that off. So I'm gonna unscrew that Allen key. All right, that was under a lot of tension. <laughs> Anyways. Let's go ahead and continue pulling this off. Let's see. There we go. Bada boom, bada bing. All right. So this is what it looks like. Hopefully, guys, you can see that. Uh, it's just got this eight mil bolt here uh, and then like I was saying, if it won't come off, you can stick your screwdriver in here and kind of bend it up. But I'm going to leave it in there, I think. But there is a little keyway right here. Let's see if you guys can see. No, you probably can't. Right here. There's a keyway. Do not lose that, guys. Uh, my understanding is that that keyway is hard, uh, hard size to find. So I'm just setting this up here out of the way. Next is we're gonna pull this off right here. So that's gotta come off. That cover is a, I believe a 22 um, or you can use a 7 8 uh, both fit adequately enough I'm using this little uh, adapter because I don't have a 22 or a 7 8 in uh, this so I'm going to do it like that let's see here there we go. 
this cover off, right, like so. <laughs> so, I forgot to, I forgot this, plus I forgot to tell you guys, uh, because the P-Pump's full of oil, uh, when you open that housing, you're probably going to get a little bit of oil to run out. Uh, don't be worried about that. That's just normal. But uh, you can save yourself a little bit of mess if you just stick a uh, catch can or, you know, oil pan under it. Uh, you know, so hopefully that helps. We can take a look inside the pump there. Uh, that is not, uh, we're going to have to rotate the engine. We, and I have AC in my shop right there. Just a side note real quick. You can tell I'm pouring sweat. It's like 90 degrees out and humidity is through the roof right now in Virginia. But uh, anyways, because of sound quality, I'm keeping the AC off for you guys. So I hope you appreciate that. If you do, give this a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed, well, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe. And uh, you know, hit the bell too. That way you know when I uh, upload new videos. Greatly appreciate it. Anyways, back to this. You're going to have to rotate the engine. Now, if you have a barring tool, uh, that is the best option. Stick it in the uh, bell housing case and uh, you can rotate the flywheel that way. I think I'm going to try from the crankshaft. I might try to rotate it from below. Um, and uh, just you have to rotate the p-pump to get to the springs so I'll kind of I'll try to explain this to I'll try to explain this to you there are better videos of people explaining this while the p-pump is out of the vehicle that's the easiest way to do this I should have done this when I was building the engine and for whatever reason I didn't. Uh, I think I just didn't want to spend money, but really 20 bucks doesn't really matter. So let me rotate the engine around, see if I can get to showing you guys what you'll need to see. Then we'll go from there. The easiest way for me to rotate this engine because I don't have the barring tool that you stick in the bell housing is right like this grab you a thing and rotate clockwise and we are making movement here so uh, what we got to just do is wait for the spring side to come around once the springs are Exposed then uh, we'll take the next step. So just rotate till you see the spring assembly Success this Is what it will look like When you reach the spring side what you will need to do at this point, um, I don't know if you can see, but can you see those two grooves? You're gonna have to stick something in there and rotate it counterclockwise um, to loosen those out. So this is the tool I'm using. Uh, it's actually a wrench um, that I had, but it's the perfect spacing and I can just twist it off. I would recommend using a, a uh, magnet because you do not want to drop anything down in your P-pump. Trust me. So use a magnet 
and make sure you take your time on this step uh, because it's very important that you do not drop anything down in your P pump. That would just be bad. So I got a stronger magnet here. I was a little worried about the one I had. Ooh. All right. First order of business is done. The screw cap right here is off. So that's number one. Keep this in order. Now it's time to pull this cap off. Perfect. So that's what that looks like there. And now we've got some springs to deal with. Next, we're going to pull the idle spring right here. That's what this looks like. This is the big one. Uh, this will go back in, so uh, keep that one. And next, we've got the springs and the little springs. Then we got the springs. Now, I just confirmed that uh, we only have two springs here. So I don't know if this is stock or if it's uh, 3K, uh, but we're gonna be putting 4Ks in here. So uh, should notice some, uh, some more, a uh, uh, little more, um rev so those are old won't be using those again all right goodness all right I about had a heart attack um, there's shims here if you see right here there's three shims um, right there those are very important uh, you do not at all want to drop those down in your P pump so this is what it looks like now. You want to make sure that these three shims either, because sometimes what will happen is they'll get stuck to your spring like this. And when you go to mag, you know, use the magnet to pull it out, they will literally a stick to your spring and when you take it out in that little gap they can fall off down into your p-pump if there's one thing that you take away from this video it's that do not drop these shims very important so there's something else I want to mention real quick down in the bottom of that cup down there that holds everything in there's a idle shim um, and a wear, uh, wear ring or something it's called like that. Uh, that is still down in there. I'm not going to take it out. Uh, you do not want to lose that, uh, those inside there. So I'm just taking it out. The last thing that I took out was 
this cup here uh, with the three shims. You can take a magnet and take, there's a wear ring and then the other uh, shim. Uh, but if you don't put those in, those are for the idle spring. Uh, and so if you forget to put those in, it will not idle right. It'll erratically idle and uh, stuff like that. So you, and it could cause a runaway, I don't know, but I'm not taking them out, but I just want you guys to be aware that uh, you need to watch out for that if you are doing this. So uh, now it's time to put it back together. So I do want to mention one thing as well real quick. Hopefully you're finding this very informative, but uh, this base here, as you saw, it had the shims. Well, this base is thicker, as you can see. So make sure you don't put your shims on the new one, if that makes sense, because this is thicker, so you don't need the shims on your new one. So the shims will not be used, neither will your old springs be used. So this is the order of things right here. It'll be just as it is right there. So what we're gonna do, uh, we're going to pop our idle spring in here. Uh, let me just make sure, yeah. So this is our idle spring. That's gonna go down in there like that. Then we've got uh, all the springs here with the base we're going to slide those all in there like so uh, now that leaves us with the cap and the nut so we're going to uh, figure out which way there is like a little slotted way if you can see that so you just got to make sure you get that lined up right there you go all back in there like that this is the part that is kind of debatable I watched a video at uh, of someone at power driven diesel doing this and they recommended tightening everything down um, two, three, four, and then loosening it all back up two, three. All right, so what they said. So hear me out on this, because this may be helpful information. Uh, when you're twisting that uh, screw, it's like uh, kind of lobed, sort of, so you can hear it click, and then another quarter turn, there's another click. He said that when you click it, uh, you're going to want to, you'll get like a soft click at first, and then you'll get a click, a definite click after that soft kind of click. They call it a soft click. So if you want your strong idle and a little more governor, uh, so if you do the soft click and then one click, that is going to be for like a uh, strong idle, soft, more, not quite up to 4K uh, rev. Whereas if you click it, soft click, click it once, and then click it one more, so a uh, equal of two clicks, that will give you 4K rev. So that's what we're going for today. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do here. So let me 
what he recommended is to all right so we got a soft click right there we've got one click two clicks all right so that right there is good so I'm gonna call that good and we'll get uh, you know should get some 4k revs out of that um, so it's really dependent on how you want your governor system set up um, but I want 4k that's why I got the 4k springs and this is what you should be left with if you installed everything right you should have your base right here you should have three shims right there that are on the base remember don't drop those in your p-pump and then uh, in my case I only had two springs right there so this is what you should be left with um, and uh, You've got two sets, so you're going to have to rotate the pump again until you reach the next uh, set of springs. And uh, then you're done. You're ready to rock and roll. Um, so yeah, it's pretty easy. I'm not going to lie. It is a little mind-wrenching hoping that you don't drop a shim for me i just i do not want to take this p-pump apart uh you know and go through that so that's the biggest deal but guys uh, i hope this has been helpful if you have any questions uh please comment below if you have a problem with the way i did this you know then have a problem with the way power driven diesel said to do it because they pretty much said to do it this exact way because uh, I'm kind of following their lead so uh, yeah if it's good enough for them it's good enough for me and uh, yeah I think that will do it um, a few pointers just to remind you the governor spring uh, doesn't have to come out but for me, it was easier uh, to kind of uh, work everything, I should say. If you just take it out, it should be easy enough and it, it uh, kind of opens up the space a little bit. Uh, however, there is, if, you, if you've ever seen what is in there, it is like a cup. So don't be afraid of anything falling out once it's down in that uh, bolt. The, the bolt there uh, it's not going to fall out because it's an enclosed cup um, if that makes sense any questions feel free to comment below give it a thumbs up subscribe if you're not I really appreciate it and uh, yeah let's uh, let's keep keep grinding and I will catch you guys on the next video peace also, soon I will be probably hooking up these uh, catch cans. I don't know if I'm going to go with both or just one, but uh, stay tuned for that because that will be going in here shortly.